Good morning, everyone. It is December 8, 2019, and we are starting the sound test of the new Monolith M1070 and M1570. I almost said 1015. So, you know, what I typically do is I get a new pair of headphones and I do the actual sound test of the individual headphone and then I move on to A and B comparisons. But for this one, I think I want to go backwards. What I want to do is do the A B comparisons first and then when I have a chance later to do a concentrated effort on the individual headphones. Uh, because I know people really want to know the answers between the 1070 versus the 1060 and the 1570 versus the LCD 3 slash 4. So let's just get to it as quickly as possible, not delay it. And those who want more precise information about the actual drivers and how they react uh, in the 1570 and the 1070, we'll get to at a later date. So today's test is between the 1060 and the 1070. Before we get to the actual test, let's take a look at the manufacturer's claims. And one thing you can say about Monolith is that they don't make any real claims about uh, the sound being for audio, uh, for audio engineers, for professionals, for mixing or mastering. They don't say anything like that. What they do say for the 1060, however, is regarding planar drivers. Um, they talk about just generally how planar drivers are flat membranes that surround the magnets. When current is delivered, the membrane sound that has lower distortion, better bass, pinpoint imaging, yada, yada, yada. But this is stuff that everybody says who uses a planar magnet. Uh, there's nothing here that would say that these, these headphones are specifically detail hunters or have flat sound. Instead, what they say, this is an audiophile listening experience. And that's their statement about what these headphones can do. In comparison to the 1070, the 1070 also doesn't market itself as an, uh, an audio engineer or a professional use headphone. What they say is that it has high-end extension, tight, clean bass to make it an audio delight. So I, I, with my conversation with Monolith, uh, Hobie Seacrest from Monolith, uh, I get the impression, and, I, and he told me directly, that their goal at Monolith is not to say their headphones are specifically for one particular type of use. Instead, they want to be able to make headphones that people will just simply enjoy the sound of. And I think that's basically what they're saying. Now that we have that in mind, let's get to our test playlist. We have four songs queued. Mountains by Hans Zimmer, Pure Water by Mustard and Migos, Moons by MB, and Drum Solo by Jack Bruce and Simon Phillips. I have both headphones connected to an AB switch, which is itself connected to the Monolith THX desktop amplifier, currently at negative 32 decibels. We're going to start off with mountains uh, with the L with the 1060 on my head, and so here we go. Negative 32 is fairly low volume, so I'm going to increase to negative 25. You can hear some of that sub bass rumble, but it's not quite. Uh, loud enough at even at negative 25. So I'm going to increase to negative 15. And at negative 15, that comes alive. The sub bass, it's more audible. It's a fairly fast sub bass transient. So you hear that boom, 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 and it just moves on very quickly. Negative 15 seems to be just about right in the volume. So I'm going to skip ahead to halfway of the song where we get the crescendo. And I'm going to increase to negative 10. Negative 10 is loud enough that I can't hear myself speak. And when the organ comes in, the sub bass is very clear. You have a mid bass rumble that is also clearly differentiated. So there's a good separation between the sub bass and the mid bass. The highs are fairly clear, but I think a little bit muddied with that sub bass rumble. I think it would be clearer. It seems a little bit of rolled off as well. There's supposed to be a, a, a peak right around here where there's uh, there, the string instruments are playing and they should cut through the 
sub bass rumble. Instead, the effect that I'm getting from the 1060 is that it's basically shoulder to shoulder with the sub bass rumble. So it doesn't cut through, it doesn't become uh, obvious. And when I say it's rolled off, that's what I mean, that it's not, it's not up front. So if we're looking at our, our imaginary soundstage, you have the sub bass rumbles, let's say center stage, and then you have the string instruments. And I would say the string instruments are probably shoulder to shoulder with the bass. It may be a step behind. Now, this doesn't mean that the bass is overwhelming. It's not. In fact, I hear the rumble in the sub bass and the mid bass clearly distinctly. So there's a good amount of separation. It's not quite hardline separation. By hardline separation, I mean you can hear the sub bass, then you can hear the mid bass when they're both playing. They're clearly separated. Those particular instruments that are providing those two separate frequencies are clearly separated. There's no melding. There's no brushing of the shoulders. I don't think it's quite to that level. I think there is indeed some brushing of the shoulder there. There's no muddiness in the bass. There's no distortion that I hear other than what I've just described. And then you have the treble response, which seems a little bit muted compared to the bass. It's not overwhelmed by the bass, but it's simply not ahead of the bass. Now, that's something you may like. It's a more relaxing experience. Certainly, that's the musical experience we want. Slightly bumped up bass, slightly rolled off treble, so that it becomes easy to listen to. With that in mind, I think that the 1060 does pretty much do that. All right, so let's switch. Oh, just hit the headphone on the mic. All right, so let's switch to the 1070. And let's restart this song. Now, one thing I will say is that the 1070 seems to have slightly better passive noise isolation than the 1060 when you put them uh, on my head. And there's, I just think that the pads on the 1070 are more comfortable than on the 1060. The 1060 pads aren't bad. I mean, they're, they're comfortable for what they are. But the way that the weight is distributed on my head with the new headband on the 1070, the thicker, more plush ear pads, these are lambskin ear pads versus the pleather ear pads or fake leather ear pads on the 1060. It just sits a little bit more comfortably on my head, but that will vary from person to person. All right, so let's restart, and here we go with the 1070 on mountains. We're currently in negative 10, so I'm going to decrease to negative 30. And negative 30 is very, very quiet, so now I'm going to increase to negative 20. Still quiet, negative 15. That's about what the LCD, not LCD, the 1060 was doing. I keep saying LCD, I don't know why. That sub bass rumble seems to be a little bit more muted on the 1070, so I'm going to increase the volume to negative 10. And that rumble seems to have just a slight bit more, a uh, slight bit quicker transients. It's just, it's a hair's breadth from what I hear. Hair's breadth from my hair. So where the 1060 seemed to have a slightly longer lingering effect, like a brum, the 1070 has a slightly faster one. Brum, brum, brum. It's just so tiny, almost imperceptible, but it's there if you listen closely. Let's skip to halfway. We're still at negative 10 decibels, and here comes the crescendo. I'm going to increase the volume to negative 5. There seems to be better separation of the mid bass and the sub bass. It's easier to hear the separate instruments. The, there's also slightly better separation between the bass and the treble instruments, the string instruments. Yeah, that energy in the treble definitely cuts through a little bit better. It's not shoulder to shoulder. I would say it's probably about a half a step to a step and have the bass. Not ear piercing, not harsh. There's no distortion at all, just like with the 1060. 
the organ instrument actually sounds like an organ. So let's go back to about 254. And around 254, you can hear the organ actually playing the higher keys. So you can hear, and, it, and it, it just cuts right through all of that sub bass rumble and the string instrument. It's clearly separated from all the other instruments that are currently playing in the mix, which is a neat sound because sometimes what will happen is that that organ will just get blended in with the bass and uh, the other string instruments and it's hard to differentiate but the 1070 seems to bring that out really well so let's go back to 10 to, to 254 listen for a couple of seconds switch to the 1060 and listen again yeah say I'm going to switch to the 1060. Hopefully the ear pads aren't going to swivel 360. Okay, got those on my head, and here we go. I'm going to bring this down to negative 10. Yeah, I think the organ instrument on the 1060 is slightly more muted, overwhelmed by the bass than on the 1070. Let me try it again. Let's go 254 back on the 1060. Yeah, so you, you, it's just slightly less obvious on the 1060 than on the 1070. Let's go back to it. Back on the 1070 real quick. There we go. Yeah, I think that the 1070 has a slightly, ever so slightly better separation and presentation of that organ around 1054, uh, not 10, 254. Overall, I think it's it's a fairly similar presentation of the song musically. It sounds, you know, there's no harshness in either of them. There's no muddiness in either of them. The bass is a little bit faster on the 1070. The treble response is practically the same except for the fact that the string instruments do stand out a little bit better on the 1070 about a half a step to a step ahead of the bass and that the separation around two minutes and 54 seconds of the song of the organ instrument is a little bit cleaner on the 1070 versus the 1060. Now is it a night and day difference? No I wouldn't say it's night and day by any stretch of the imagination I would say it's probably a notice it's a definitely a noticeable change when you do an A and B test, if you were to put these two headphones on and you didn't know anything about them, you did an, a blind test, I don't think that people will say, oh yeah, this second one sounds so much more different from the first one. It's totally different. I don't think people are really going to say that. I think they're going to say, wow, that sounds like the same thing to me. But that's a normal person. If you're an audiophile and this is your hobby and this is what you do, you, you're like a wine connoisseur. Maybe you'll be able to tell slight differences, but I think it's going to be probably a little bit hard with a song like Mountains. So let's go to the next one, which is Pure Water by Mustard and Amigos. We've got the 1060 ready to go, and so here we go. We're at negative 20 decibels. You can hear the vocals fairly clearly. They're a little muffled already you get the sub bass it's not particularly impactful the sub bass rumble is fairly muted it's very similar to the sub bass in say the NDH 20 it's there's no rumble effect here I mean this song is supposed to have that subwoofer rumble sort of thing that's not what I hear so I'm gonna increase from negative 20 to negative 15 uh, negative 15 there's still no real bass impact. With that sub bass rumble, the vocals are ahead of it, but it's not particularly crystal clear. So the mids seem a bit muffled on the 1060. And it's not because of the bass, because the bass is fairly light with this song. There's no harshness, there's no ear pierciness, but there's also no air in the song. Now by air I mean separation of each vocal, each vocalist. 
So you, you've got two. You got you got the actual singer, then you got the hype man, and their vo- tonalities tend to mix and meld a little bit. So when they're both singing, it, it, it's just a little bit harder to hear the separation of their voices. Moreover, it, when the singer says a lyric and then he pauses, he takes a breath, and I can't hear that intake of breath. Now that could be mastered out, that could be mixed out of, uh, of the recording, that's certainly possible, but it just sounds so melded that he goes like this, right? So he says a word, uh, and then he moves on. Like I'm talking, I'm talking, and I'm moving on. Now you should be able to hear that intake of breath, and it, there are headphones that do provide that intake of breath, but with the 1060, not so much. It's just one word after another melded together a little bit too much where it loses some of that airiness, that separation. It's almost a warm sounding experience. And by warm sounding, I mean it's not a, it's not a large sound stage at all. I would say it's a maybe average sound stage with this song as well as with Mountains on the 1060. So lack of more than average sound stage, so about average sound stage plus the bass response which is fairly light for this song. Now that may be a good thing because you're saying, well I don't want bass that's overwhelming. That's true. But then you combine that with the fact that the mids seem a bit melded and less clear than they really should be that I've heard it in other headphones. Uh, so it gives you a little bit more closed off experience, more like a, uh, a closed back headphone than an open back headphone, in my opinion. Let's go to the 1070 and let's see how the 1070s perform. I've got the amplifier at negative 15. I'm going to keep it there. I think I'm going to need to pump up the volume a little bit more on the 1070, but we'll see. Okay, here we go with Mustard Amigos. So far, it sounds fairly similar to the 1060 at the beginning. I'm going to increase negative 10. Yeah, the bass on the TED 70 has a little bit more impact. And it actually sounds like a subwoofer. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, and, but it's not overwhelming. And, it, there, and the transients is really quick. So there's more volume to the sub bass on the 1070 and it, there's a slightly faster transients than compared to the 1060. The vocals sound a little bit clearer on the 1070 than on the 1060. And you can hear the backup vocalist separated clearly from the primary. The mids are not overall by the bass effect. I would say the mids are probably about a half a step to a step ahead of the bass. And you know, one the the thing that really stands out to me is that is the sub bass, that subwoofer sound. You know, when, if you put a subwoofer in the trunk of your car and you turn up the volume and you increase the 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 bass, it'll sound something like this, vroom, 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 and it sounds god awful, right? Well. Part of this, the thing with hip hop songs is that they rely very heavily on that sub bass the vast majority of the time, but they're very well controlled. I mean, if you're if you're good at your job as a as an artist, you'll you'll be able to control it. That sub bass rumble is only there to provide a little bit of emphasis and character to the song. It's not supposed to overwhelm it. Hip hop songs have, you know, obvious lyrics and. The vast majority of the times, the lyrics are supposed to cut through the sub bass and the bass. What Beats headphones, for example, do is they accentuate, and Bose, they accentuate the bass so that it sounds like the mids are really muffled. Other headphones will accentuate the bass and then also pump up the mids, and that causes distortion. Others will roll off the treble. And so there's a lot of things that, that headphones do to accentuate hip hop songs. And in doing though, in trying to accentuate the song, and this is, I'm talking about mass-produced headphones, I'm not talking about audiophile headphones, what will happen is that the, the, the bass will sound more thick and more distorted. It'll sound more like that subwoofer in your trunk. Vroom, 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 vroom. 
that's not the way that the 1070 presents it. That's not how the 1060 presents it either. But the 1060 has a different character than the 1070. And I can say that fairly easily at this point with this song. So you get pure water. And pure water sub bass is boom, 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 right? Like that. That's fast transients. That's how the 1070 presents it. The 1060 presents it a little bit more lazily, a little bit more muffled in comparison. It goes boom, 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 boom. boom. You might be sitting there going, I don't hear a difference. I understand. And this is the best way I can explain it right now. So listen very closely. The 1060's presentation of the sub bass is, and the bass is like this. Boom, 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 right? Now listen to the 1070. Boom, 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 boom right? A boom, boom versus ten. Boom. Boy, this, I sound like a complete moron. I understand. Please forgive me. This is the only way to explain without you actually sitting there and doing an A-B test. There is a tonality difference between the two. If you pay attention and you just sit there and you listen, you can hear it. The tonality difference is this. The 1060 has a slightly more muffled sub bass, even though it's a light. It, it's a strange experience. So when I say there are headphones that are bass light, they're, you have to keep pumping up the volume for more bass and Sometimes it doesn't happen. With the 1060, when you get up to around negative 10, negative 15, yeah, that bass starts coming alive finally in the driver. But it's still not clear. It's It lacks volume, but even though it lacks volume, it's still muffled, right? So it's not responding to more power the way that you expect it to. You typically expect pump up the volume, bass gets better, gets clearer, gets louder. Well, on the 1060, it just gets louder. It doesn't really get clearer. On the 1070, at negative 10, which is where I think it would need to be uh, to actually hear it, because it, again, it, these headphones still need a little bit more power. At negative 10 decibels with the 1070, you start getting the the sub bass rumble, boom, 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 but it's fast and it's clear, and it's faster and it's clearer than on the 1060 when you do an A and B test. The mid sound almost the same on the 1060 versus the 1070, except for the fact that the 1070's mids rep reproduction is a little bit clearer. Other than that, I think that, that there's no real tonality change. It's just that the 1070 has clearer presentation. You can hear the separation between the hype man and the primary vocalist. There's still no sharp intake of breath that really should be present, but that extra separation really does add a bit more clarity to the vocalist. I hope that makes sense. All right, so let's switch to the 1060 again. And we're going to go to the next song, which is Moons by MB. And I'm going to decrease the volume to, let's start off with negative 20 on the 1060. Here we go. Now, if you know anything about the song, Moons is uh, is the song that Joshua Valour uses in some, his videos, his intros. A portion of it, anyway. So it starts off with... Dun, 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 dun. That would be around eight seconds. So eight seconds of the song, there's... Dun, 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 and then boom, ba -bum, ba boom, 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 boom. Let's try it again. Right now. That sub bass sounds a little bit muffled. It's almost like you put your ear next to the. <laughs> it's almost like you put your ear right next to the subwoofer in your theater system. It's not. It's not harsh by any means. It's just boom, 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 boom. That's what it sounds. You got to give it a little bit of room. But it doesn't. It doesn't sound clear. It just sounds m more distorted. And I, if I pull the ear pads out a little bit, yeah. So I'm currently what I'm doing is I'm holding each ear cup with my hands, and I've stretched it out to maybe a, maybe two or three millimeters. So they're not touching my ears completely. They're not fully seated on my head. And with that tiny bit more separation, it gets a little bit clearer with that sub bass. Very unscientific test, by the way. Let's skip ahead. 
So we're at two minutes and six seconds. Around two minutes and 15 seconds, there's the following. Dun, 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 dun. Boom. And that comes back in. So you hear the th- the dun, 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 dun. And then the sub bass rumble. Boom. And that should be coming up any second now, hopefully. Right about now-ish. Come on. Right now. Yeah. So 237. That was off by 20 seconds. So 237. So let's go back to 234. So what I mean here is that there is a period of silence for a couple of seconds, and then there's dun 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 dun. So you should be able to hear a bass instrument. It's probably it sounds like a kick drum. I could be wrong. It's a little muffled. It's not particularly clear. So let's assume for the sake of argument that it's the kick drum, and then it sounds like a cymbal being hit as well. But the cymbal sounds really muffled. I mean, really super muffled. So you get dun 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 dun, and then a breath of 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 silence and then boom 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 the same sub bass rumbly thing that was at the beginning of the song throughout the song it sounds really closed off and it sounds pretty muffled so the energy in some of the treble instruments of that synth doesn't really cut through it sounds a bit like you're wearing uh close back headphones it's a little bit more closed off than eerie sound signature. And then on top of that, that sub bass and mid bass rumble is just combined and, and it's just melded so much. It sounds so thick, unclear, that even when there's a moment of hesitation between the last kick drum, thum, and then the, the sub bass, boom, it's still not clear. So let's listen to it real quick again. Yeah, it just sounds a little bit distorted. Now, that could be the mix of the song. That's certainly possible. But I've heard MB many, many times, and there are headphones that produce it just like the 1060, and there are headphones that produce it clearly. And you be, you be the judge which one you like, which experience you like. Okay, so let's switch to the 1070. We're currently at negative 20 decibels. I'm going to increase to negative 15. And let's go again. So what I'm listening for right now is the clarity at the beginning of the song with the sub bass. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-mm. So here's the thing. I can say very clearly that sub bass is clearer, less muffled on the 1070. It's just, and it's quicker too. It's such a fast transients compared to the 1060. The 1060 is transients on this at say between four seconds, five seconds of the song to 17 seconds is like this. Boom, 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 boom. Kind of lingering, whereas the 1070 faster, it goes boom, 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 a little bit faster. So let what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to about four seconds, listen to the 1070, switch to the 1060 just to be sure. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's switch to the 1060. I'm going to bring down the volume to about negative 20, which is just about right. About equal. Here we go. 1060. Yeah. The 1070 is clearer. The the reverberation on the 1060 lingers versus the 1070. The 1070 is reverberation, the, the transients on that sub bass is faster, noticeably so when you do an A and B test. And it's less emphasized like on, than on the 1060. Now that sounds counterintuitive, right? You're saying, I originally said that the, uh, on the previous song, the 1060 seems a little light on the bass. Now I'm saying the 1060 sounds a little bit more emphasized in the bass with this song. Well, we're talking about different frequencies. 
And it's, even though you got bass, there's sub bass, there's mid bass, there's tiny variations in the way that the bass is reproduced per song. So for this particular song, the 1060 has a bit more lingering effect on that sub bass boom, versus the 1070, which has faster one. Boom. And it's noticeable. The other thing I can say is that the bass on the 1070 sounds uh, clearer than on the 1060. I'm just going to put the 1070 back on so I can finish hearing it. Okay, got the 1070 back on, and let's keep going. I'm going to increase negative 15 again. No distortion at all. You know how I said that with the 1060 sound like your ear was right up next to the subwoofer? Um, on your theater system? That is not the experience I'm having with the 1070. In fact, this is the total opposite. When I put my hands on the 1060s, ear cups and I pulled them apart for by a few millimeters it became a little bit clearer well I'm not doing that to the 1070 and it sounds clearer just as is as it's sitting on my head it's like there's more room between me and that bass instrument that sub bass rumble now the bass is still not overemphasized just like with the 1070 or 1060 it, the 1060 doesn't overemphasize the bass so that it, it muddies the mids, it's just that the total mix of the 1060 sounds a bit more claustrophobic in comparison. So the sound stage for the 1070 sounds a little bit wider, a bit more separation be between it and the 1060. So I'm going to move forward and go to about 230 where we had that da 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 boom sound. Here we go. Now there's silence almost just about here. This and here we go right about now. Yeah, faster. In fact, remember what I said that that ten 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 that sound around ten uh, two minutes and thirty five seconds or whatever it is. It sounds like a kick drum and a cymbal, and it's really hard to differentiate. It's hard to separate them with the ten sixty. Not so with the ten seventy. You can hear the kick drum and you can hear the cymbal both playing at the same time, clearly audible. Tin, tin, tin. And then brief moment of silence, and then that sub bass comes back in. Again, very, very fast transients. So I'm going to listen to it again, go back to about 234, listen to it on the 1070, switch to the 1060, and compare. Here we go. I'm going to do it again. Got the 1060 ready. Volume back down to about negative 19. Here we go. Yeah. If nothing else, the the 1070 has a little bit better separation between the, the kick drum and the and the cymbal, and the 1070's transients is faster with that uh, with that kick drum versus the 1060. So, it's a uh, Nuance difference, you could say, but noticeable when you do an AMP test. Let's go to our last song, Drum Solo by Jack Bruce and Simon Sil Simon Phillips. Simon Phillips. Now, there are a couple of things with drum solo. Number one, when the song first starts, there's it's recorded live, so you hear all these people yelling and screaming, and it can become really harsh to the ear if your volume is set pretty high. We got to listen for that and determine whether or not either headphone uh, makes that initial startup pretty harsh because it's people yelling. Then we also want to hear for that drum initially, because it sounds it should sound like the bottom of the drum falling out. It should sound like this, boing, boing, boing. A lot of headphones can't do that. A lot of headphones just make it sound muffled. And there are some very, very good headphones that bring it out, boing, boing, like the clears. There are some headphones that come oh so close but simply can't do it, like the LCD-1 and the HD6XX, uh, and that there are other headphones that can just about do it, like the Sundara. Let's see how the 1060 and the 1070 compare. So we're at negative 19 decibels with the 1060. Here we go. The initial startup is not harsh with the crowd yelling. I'm listening for that drum sound, and it doesn't sound like it's the bottom of the drum is falling out. So I'm going to increase negative 15. 
not not quite there i mean almost it's it's just a bit more clarity and you might be able to hear it Yep, it just sounds a bit muffled. We're at negative 15, and negative 15 is loud enough that I can't really hear my voice. And I don't really want to go any louder. Let's go ahead a little bit to listen to the riffing. Now, when he's riffing on the drum, you should hear the impact of the drumstick on top of the drum head, but it sounds more muffled, like somebody laid a layer of a sheet, a bed sheet or something over the drum heads, and... The drummer is striking down with the drumstick, but he has to pass through the layer first before the drumstick can make impact on the drum head. And it sounds muffled. I'll increase the volume to negative 10. Yeah. So when the drumstick comes down on the drum head, it, there should be a sharp spike. And it should be a treble spike. It should go twack, twack, twack. The 1060 doesn't present that at all. In fact, the 1060's presentation of the drum strikes is more muffled. And the transients between one drum strike to the other is also pretty muffled because it's so long. The transients is really, really long on the 1060 on this song. So you're supposed to hear the drum strike and dung, 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 right? You're supposed to hear the drum strikes on each drum head. Well, what happens with the 1060 is that the first drum head is hit the next one is hit and the next one is hit well the previous drum heads resonance is still carrying through and it sounds a bit more muffled and so you get this kind of melding effect it's a bit warmer sounding meaning it sounds amplified over each, each other each drum strike is amplified over the previous one because the previous one is still dying off when the next one is hit and so you get kind of this this muddier effect from that now, it still sounds really smooth, right? So there's no harshness, there's no distortion, there's no ear piercingness. It just sounds really, really smooth. But I didn't hear the bottom of the drum effect at the beginning of the song, boom, boing. It was so close. It's just missing clarity because of that muffledness. Then you have the drum strikes when the guy is riffing, and you can hear that it just sounds muffled. If you've ever sat next to a live band and you listen to the drummer you can hear that it's you can hear the sharp twack twack if he's riffing on the drums if you're sitting really close that's not you can really hurt your ears but if you're sitting you know say 10 15 feet away you can still hear that twack twack the way that the 1060 presents this song is almost like you're sitting about 40 feet away and you're listening to the sound through 40 39 feet of audience and so the sound is getting through everybody else and it finally gets to you and it sounds a bit muffled. That's the experience I'm getting, if that makes sense. All right, so let's switch to the 1070. We're currently at negative 10 decibels and we're just going to leave it at that. Let's restart the song. Here we go. I have to say the crowd sounds a bit clearer on the 1070, but uh, it's still not ear piercing. I'm listening for that bottom of the drum falling out effect. And I don't think it's quite the, doing it either. Yeah, that boing boing sound effect that should be present at the beginning of the song with the drum feeling of the drum, bottom of the drum is falling out. I don't think I'm quite hearing it. Let me go back. Yeah, it's so close. It just. It's not quite there. Now, it doesn't sound muffled. The 1060 sounded muffled, less clear. The 1070 is clearer, but it's still not reproducing that boing, boing sound. But the transients is faster than the 1060, and it's clearer. Overall, it's just clearer. Let's keep going. We're currently at negative 7.5, which is just about the same volume as the 1060 was at the end. The dr the drum strikes, the riffing is faster. The transit is definitely faster than the 1060. It doesn't linger as long as on the 1060. Let's skip ahead a little bit and get to the riffing. Here we go. Yeah, clearer than the 1060, but it still sounds like there's something layered on top of the drum head. Not as thick, so it's not a comforter. It's more like a bed sheet, much thinner. 
So the energy of the drum strike comes out a little bit more on the 1070 than the 1060. No distortion. No harshness. The, the bass impact is just faster, right? Dun, 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 Whereas on the 1060, it's like dun, 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 dun. It's, it's just a little bit longer, a little bit more melded on the 1060, a little bit muddier in comparison um, than on the 1070. The 1070 is just fast. There's a noticeable tweak to the, to the bass transients on the 1070 uh, when you compare it to the 1060. It's just a little bit faster, a little bit clearer, uh, a little bit more forward than on the 1060, which seems to have a more lazy response to it. You know, the transients is longer. It sounds a bit warmer. It sounds more closed off, less air. There's less separation between the sub bass and the mid bass. Um, so going back and forth, I can definitely say that on this song, there is a difference. I hear it. It's not a night and day difference, but there is a difference. If you want the fast, if, you, if you're deciding between these two, whether you should spend the extra, what is it, depending on where you buy these from, the extra $50 or the extra $200 on the 1070, I, I don't, it's a very nuanced difference. If you want the faster, the faster bass response of these two than the 1070, that's, that's no doubt to me that the 1070 has a faster bass response and you can hear that in the song drum solo. Now, when I said there was a, a sheet or something layered on top of the drum head doing the riffing on the 1060, that continues to be true. <clears throat> excuse me. That continues to be true for the 1070, but to a lesser degree. The 1070 is clearer than the 1060, but it still doesn't have that sharp twack twack sound on top of the drum heads. So like I said, the difference is this. Comforter over the drum head like the 1060 versus bed sheet over the drum head like the 1070. Now don't take that to be that the 1060's response is muffled and just unrecognizable. That's not what I mean. I'm just trying to relate to you the, the type of energy that you would hear when you're comparing these two where the energy from the drum strike on the 1060 is more blunted because of something covering the drum head versus the 1070, which is still blunted, but to a noticeably less degree. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So let's talk about conclusions. Not a night and day difference. Uh, a refinement over the 1060 sound for the bass, yes. I would, I would say that. I think that the 1060 has less clarity in the bass region, less separation in the sub-bass and mid-bass, um, and the 1070 is has faster transients than the 1060. Now, if you put these two headphones on over the, the test that we've done, if you put these two headphones on back-to-back -back blind tests, would people, would normal people, not audiophiles, would normal people be able to tell the difference? And the answer probably is no, not normal people, not people who really just sit there and listen and do what we're doing. Would audiophiles be able to tell the difference? Yeah, I think so. If you go, if you do more than one test, if you do more than one song. So with mountains, it would be like, mm, I can't tell the difference. But with if you go back and you do four songs and you do back and forth, back and forth, I think that gives plenty of time for people to start recognizing the character of each headphone. And so now that we do that sort of blind test, I think you'll be able to tell a difference. It's a nuanced difference, but you'll be able to tell it. So it's like drinking a, you know, it's like drinking a, a Budweiser versus a Coors, right? You, there's a slight taste difference. You know, whether you like Budweiser or Coors, it's totally up to you. There's a slight taste difference. And if you've had enough of them, you, if you've had enough experience with them, not if you've had enough of them, then you're just drunk. If you've had enough experience with either of them, you'll say, yeah, that's a Bud or that's a Coors. They both taste like beer, you know, American beers, but, you know, there's a slight difference in taste. And that's the way I would explain it with the 1060 versus the 1070. Yeah, they, they sound very similar. They taste like beer, except for the fact that the 1070 sound, it tastes a little bit clearer, right? It's a little bit more refreshing, if you want to put it that way. So the 1070 has a clarity to it that the 1060 doesn't in the bass. It has slightly better separation between the, the sub bass and the mid bass that the 1060 doesn't have. It sounds less muffled in songs like drum solo versus the 1060. There's a bit more energy present, more clarity present in the treble versus the 1060. 
um, they both sound almost the same on the soundstage, but I think I have to say that the 1070 is probably wider soundstage. Not huge, but just enough to get that separation out, and it does not sound as closed off as the 1060 does. So overall, I think that, yes, there is a difference between the 1060 and the 1070. If you already have the 1060, will you go out and buy the 1070 mm, for the bass only? It's like, mm, I don't know. I don't know if that would be the thing to do. But if you don't have the 1060 and you don't have the 1070, you're going, which one would I buy this Christmas season? Now, okay, now you can have that discussion. I think that's a valid discussion to have. But if you already have the 1060 and you're going, boy, I really want much, much better uh, bass response. Does the 1070 give me much, much better bass response? It gives you no nuance better bass response, in my opinion. I don't think that it's a night and day difference for the bass. I hope that this has been of some help. Uh, we're going to continue these tests, go back to the mids, hopefully today. The plan is today. And uh, move on from there. We're going to continue testing the 1570 and start comparing that headphone as well. If you like my content, if you like anything uh, of my other channel videos, channel videos, any, any of the videos on my channel, please consider subscribing and please consider donating to me on Patreon. Just a couple of bucks a month would help me keep this channel going. Uh, for the price of one cup of coffee at Starbucks, you could help me save up money so that I can buy new and old products and test them thoroughly for you. I hope all of you have a wonderful, amazing rest of your weekend and a great end and beginning, beginning and end to your upcoming week. Take care.